For all your credit problems, concerns, or questions, call the show's off-air number at 973-771-5118 and speak to the hosts of the show, Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan, directly, 973-771-5118. You're listening to The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey with local credit experts Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan. Now, here's Jason and Damon. Welcome back to The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio Network. I'm Jason Kaplan. Sitting here with Mike Coccio, board op extraordinaire. We have Damon DiCrescenzo, business partner and co-host with me, who, by the way, had to get his suit um, refitted because he can't fit into it from 10 years ago. It's, it wasn't, thank you, Jason. You're listening to the Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio. Actually, it wasn't 10 years ago. It was seven years ago that I got married and I had a tuxedo made. And seven years and three inches on my waistline later, it needs to get taken out. I think that that's a normal thing for men our age. <laughs> Apparently, the tailor told him, I'll take it out this time, but you throw the pants away next time. The old Italian, I'll take it out this time, but that's it. <laughs> I think that uh, he got a little nervous when he saw my, my gut, which was hanging over the the pants. But uh, this is a show about real estate and, and not about my waistline, Jason. So let's talk about credit. Uh, this is the Credit Pros. Give us a call, 973-771-5118. Again, 973-771-5118. Uh, you can always reach us on the web, creditrepair.to. And uh, I'm really excited, as I mentioned in the first segment, that we have a financial planner and a friend, Gary Capaldo, in the office. Gary is uh, a partner at Guided Professional Solutions, an independently owned financial consulting firm, and it has more than 20 years of experience, dedicated, personalized service to clients. They have offices in New York City and Staten Island, and Gary, as I said before, is a professor at Wagner College, an all-around nice guy, and a black belt, which is something that I'm not, and I think that that's something that really is a fantastic. Say hi, Gary. Damon, thank you. Thank you for having me here okay, today. Is that, is that yeah. karate, jujitsu? It's actually, that's, that's a good point. It's not karate, it's judo. Judo, jujitsu, uh, one almost one and the same, but it's it's not karate. It's, but uh, the black belt is the black belt is the black belt. Right? No, no, it's the discipline that the black belt is in, which in my case is uh, is judo. Who's tougher, a judo black belt or a jujitsu black belt? That's a good question. Well, they're actually both derived from the same, um, back way long ago. But what's happened is that there are different uh, disciplines that have come out of it. You have the Common uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is on this UFC you see. Is that the Hoist Gracie stuff where they roll around on the floor? Exactly. You know, uh, I trained in the traditional uh, Judo. Uh, So you have all these different styles and techniques, and everything is uh, one big melting pot right now. And and lucky for me, he's sitting next to Damon, not on my (laughs) side of the uh, table over here. Because he can throw you over to this side (laughs) of the table. (laughs) I might fall. I might fall over. So, Gary, let's talk about some of the things that, that uh, a financial planner would want to uh, communicate to, to his audience and our audience, was, which, is, which is always interested in such things. From the perspective of money and, and investments in retirement, what are some of the things that people need to focus on for the new year? Good question. I think the new year is a great time to check on things that you often overlook or don't think about. And one of the biggest things that I found is uh, making sure that your beneficiaries are up to date. I actually just went through this process myself. Um, I have a two-year-old, and I was looking at my life insurance policies and my annuities and all my investments, and I noticed that I did not have my son listed as a backup, what we call contingent beneficiary. So what does that mean? Well, if, God forbid, something happens to myself and my wife, then all the money from my life insurance policies, my investments, would actually go to my daughter, not to my son. He'd be left holding the bag. Um, so it was, uh, you know, the, the process was good to go through. So I encourage, I think the first of the year is a great time to go through it. Look at things, look at your IRAs, look at life insurance policies, annuities, make sure someone is actually named and make sure it's up to date. What, what, what if someone never named anybody? What if you don't have a beneficiary? And you know, that's a great question because it's very common and it can result in a financial disaster. Um, if someone does not name a beneficiary on an account, then what happens upon their death is that the, those monies will go to their estate, okay, which is probated, which can actually cost money. Okay. If you have a will, if you are prudent enough to draft a will, then the monies will go according to the will, which is also subject to probate. So remember, beneficiaries come before wills. They supersede wills. So whomever you name as a beneficiary 
is most important, even more important than the will. Uh, but if you don't have a will, what a lot of people don't, uh, then what happens? Well, each state has what's called intestacy laws. So what happens is that the monies will go according to the intestacy laws in your state in which you reside, which means that the monies may ultimately not end up going to whom you desired them to go to in the first place. So it's extremely important to make sure they're up there. Let me give you an example um, of something else that I've came across. Someone young just started out at a job. They named their sister as the beneficiary. Years went by, got married, had children, forgot about that, and then died. Guess who got the money? Government. The sister, right? Mm. The wife, the children did not get the money. And legally, there's nothing they could do about it. Wow. So that's a real-life situation. That's why I think the new year is a great time to... uh, to look at this stuff. And it's not tough to put together a will, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, everyone should have a will. Everyone should have a will. You know, people think it's for the wealthy. It's it's not. Everyone, especially with children, okay? Because if you don't have a will, then the state is going to decide who's going to raise your children, who's <laughs> going to manage their money, and, you know, you think that it's going to yeah, be the person The state can't even clean the streets or pick up the yeah. garbage. Oh, or clean <laughs> the snow. <laughs> Believe me, I know all about it. So uh, what other things should people be thinking about for the new year, Gary? Well, I think it's also a great time to uh, look at your whole risk management plan. What do I mean by that? Well, we're talking about some morbid topics. What happens if your premature death occurred today? Do you have enough life insurance to protect your family? If you became disabled, do you have enough disability coverage to protect your family? Or uh, if you became disabled and you're more mature in life, are your assets protected from nursing home costs? I mean, these are these are things that can happen to us. I mean, we all know mortality is 100%. We're all going to die at some point. It's not a thing that can happen. It's a thing that, that does will happen. happen. But yeah. the disability, long-term, you know, the long-term care may, hopefully won't happen. But you want to protect your family. And what happens is that life goes, goes on. It goes fast. And oftentimes, we don't keep up with that. You know, you may have done some type of coverage in the past. Um, but your needs change, and typically your financial plans don't keep up with that. Um, so I call it a uh, great time to do what, what's a, what I call an insurance checkup uh, for the new year as well. That's awesome advice. Uh, so once a year, please use this as, as your time. Like they say uh, in the new years, you change your batteries on your smoke alarm or, or whatever. That, that The clocks yeah. stop. You do it then. <laughs> the clocks Set your clocks back. Uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of people that have been laid off in the last year and two years. Uh, For people in the situation who had a retirement plan with their old employer, what are their options now? What are they supposed to do? Most of the time, you're not required to do anything specific, such as a 401k, if you have it with your old employer. Um, So you could just leave it with the old employer, typically, um, even though you're not contributing to the plan. And a lot of people ask me, well, if I leave it there, then am I stuck in those investments? Well, you're stuck in the investments that that plan has provided to you. So you can still move your money around within that plan, but quite frankly, there's not a lot of benefit in leaving it there. Um, Another option would be is to roll it over into your new company's retirement plan if that company offers a plan. That can be a good option. Uh, Most retirement plans have a lot of creditor protection features with it um, because they're ERISA plans. A lot of them have loan provisions that you can uh, take advantage of. Um, or another option is to roll it over into your own individual retirement account, also known as an IRA. Right? There are many advantages to an IRA, uh, such as a lot of control. You have more investment choices. You can better diversify. You can consolidate. But it may not be the best option for everyone. Um, you should really consult with your financial advisor or tax professional before making any of those uh, decisions. Good. So at that point, let me give you a number. Gary Capaldo's number is 718-551-9665. But, it, you know, it, it's interesting that you said that because the state's in a fiscal crisis because of pensions. And everyone knows the pensions are going the way of the dodo bird. They're not happening anymore. If you go get a job just about anywhere if outside working for the city or the state, Pensions are gone. You used to work for IBM, you got a pension. Now you get a 401k. So given that, are 401ks good? Should everyone who has the ability to get into a 401k be getting into one? It's a great point. Uh, In most cases, 99% of the time, the answer is yes. One of the greatest things about 401ks, it's a forced savings. It's out of sight, out of mind. We all know once our paycheck hits our bank account, 
it disappears. You have expenses, just everyday life, and you end up paying yourself less. So the 401k is a forced savings. The money gets saved before it hits your bank account. And there's a lot of employers that match. That's the other point, okay? They match. Not every uh, plan has a match, but if a plan certainly has a match, you must take full advantage of that. I come across too many people who have a match available to them and are not taking full advantage of it. I mean, it's it's crazy. You, you're leaving a bag of money. It's free money. On the t- <laughs> it's free money. Yeah. You're leaving a bag of money on the table. If you uh, saw a bag of money on the street, you're going to pick it up, right? Right. That's what you're doing by not taking advantage of the match. But even if they don't match, 401ks offer tax advantages as well. Um, we call them pre-tax contributions. So you get to save some money on taxes by saving your own money. Um, and as you mentioned, Damon, the trend is is the responsibility for to save for retirement is now on the employee, not the employer. The traditional way was employers provide pension plans, city pension plans, some major corporations have pension, but they're phasing those out. Sure. So it's up to you. If you don't save your own money, what are you going to do? You can depend upon Social Security? Right, right, which will be gone in 25 years anyway at the pace that they're going. And the one thing I want to point out also when we're talking about the new year, give yourself a raise every year. So it's the beginning of the year, Save more into the 401k. Typically, you can do it by percentage of dollar amount. If you're putting 4% in, put 5% in because most plans allow you to adjust the contribution amount quite frequently. So if it's too much, then you can always lower. But force yourself to go save a little more. And then if worst case, you can always scale back on that. But check with your plan provider. Well, let me ask you a question, right? I I own a company, the Credit Pros. It's a small business. I'm in the scheme of things. What if I don't have a 401k available? If you don't have a 401k available to you, there are numerous things that you can do as a business owner. And quite frankly, some employers don't even offer 401k. So even as individuals, there's certain things that they can do. Um, As a business owner, there are a vast majority of choices you have to design your own plan, specifically designed to meet your own needs, which can actually be more advantageous than than a 401k plan. If you are not a business owner, then you can open up an IRA, as we discussed before, or a Roth IRA plan. Of course, there are certain restrictions and rules that go along with that, so you want to discuss that with your uh, with your financial planner. Hmm. And, and it's funny, Gary, you just happen to be one. Gary's number, Gary Capaldo, a financial planner extraordinaire and certified financial planner, 718-551-9665. You're listening to the Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio. If you have any interest in what we're talking about, if you have problems with your credit, if you need credit restoration, pick up the phone and give us a call. Speak with Jason Kaplan. Or myself, Damon DiCrescenzo. My number is 973-771-5118. Again, 973-771-5118. Or always on the web at creditrepair.to. Now, here's a question that I get every single day. And personally, I wonder for myself. How can I save more money? How can my clients and how can people out there save more money? Well, there are a few different techniques that I found. I've been doing this for uh, over 17 years now. Um, a lot of it has to do with being disciplined and having a system that works for you. I'm a big fan of paying yourself first. Okay, what I mean is find some type of system that forces you to save money. One great way is setting up what, what I call a bank authorization, where you determine a uh, a day of the month, a certain dollar amount, and that particular day, that set dollar amount of each month, money will come directly out of your bank account and fund some type of investment, very similar to a 401k. I actually have a client who set himself up as a payee on his online banking. Hmm. And that's just a matter of perception. He said, you know what? Every time I pay my landlord, I'm making him rich. Why don't I pay myself? So he views himself as a bill. And every time he pays a bill, he sends himself a check. He gets a check in the mail, and then he deposits in his investment account. It may seem a little extreme, but that's what works for him. That's a great idea. You know, uh, it's... uh, The whole problem comes down to to discipline and mm -hmm. and people's perception and people how people look at their money. And people need to start looking at their money as their money and putting it into their pocket and doing what they can do to try to build their nest egg for themselves. Uh, Here's a, a, a question that I was... And Jason and I were actually talking about that. If you're in a high tax bracket, as uh, a lot of personally my clients are, and they pay a lot of taxes, is there anything they could be doing or maybe taking a look at to pay less taxes or or, uh, to try to save a little bit more money? Sure. I mean, everyone's in a different situation, of course, but the first thing I would recommend is initiate a discussion with your tax professional about proactive strategies 
for the future. A lot of times when you meet with your accountant, it's for the past. You want to have a proactive discussion going forward. There are tax deductions that are out there that you can take advantage of. There are certain investment vehicles um, that you can take advantage of, such as shifting taxable money into tax-free money like municipal bonds. Municipal bonds can be great investments, but of course, with every investment, there are numerous risks, especially with municipal bonds, including higher interest rates, recessions, uh, deterioration of municipal bond markets, downgrades. Which recently may may be an issue. The, the, the states are perhaps having a hard time keeping on those payments that they're committed to. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Um, states are in some trouble, but uh, I don't necessarily believe municipal bondholders are. Um, but that's definitely a separate conversation. Uh, we can have another day. Uh, fixed annuities is a great also uh, investment alternative. Uh, it allows you money to grow tax deferred, um, gives you guaranteed growth. Um, of course, the guarantees are based upon the financial well-being and claims of paying ability of the uh, issuing insurance company. Um, but those are some great strategies, and make sure you're taking full advantage of the pre-tax savings if you have 401ks, and do it now while you have a full 12 months ahead of you versus at the end of the year where you have no time to uh, take advantage of this. That's perfect. That's what we talked about last week, too. Take this time to plan for the future. Forget about the year past because the year has already passed. Use this time, and I know personally I'm using this time to think about where I want to go and and hopefully with this awesome advice, thank you, Gary, for giving this, this fantastic advice to us. Uh, folks out there, if you have any financial questions, I want you to call Gary and his team at Guided Professional Solutions at 718-551-9665. Again, uh, Gary's available to speak with you. He's a certified financial planner. And he's ready to talk about any of these issues. If well, you I, I understand that, but let me ask you a question. Say I want to get started. This is, this is somewhat a little overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So where do I begin? Well, first thing I recommend is for everyone to create a financial plan. I mean, the process entails analyzing where you stand currently, setting specific financial goals, and mapping out a specific plan of action to help you get there. This will help you become organized, and by having a written plan alone dramatically increases your chances of success. Gary, thank you so much. Uh, again, if you want to get in touch with Gary, we certainly uh, would love you to. And his team at Guided Professional, 718-551-9665. This is the Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio. Give us a call. It's 973-771-5118. Stick around after the break. We're going to have some credit, true or false. True or false game coming up. For all your credit problems, concerns, or questions, call the show's off-air number at 973-771-5118 and speak to the hosts of the show, Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan, directly. 973-771-5118. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Hello, Jason Kaplan here, host of The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey. I'm thrilled that I get to speak to you every week and bring you the truths about your credit. A lot of stuff you hear in the news is just flat out wrong. If you want the inside knowledge about what's going on with your credit, that's what I'm here for. Give me a call at 973-771-5118. That's 973-771-5118. Whether you're looking to buy a home, get a job, apply for car insurance, your credit's the most important factor in these decisions. I can help you make an educated decision about what's going on and what's best for you and your family. It's easy. I give you the real facts and you decide what to do from there. Just give me a call. I'm here to help. 973-771-5118. That's 973-771-5118. Or visit us online at creditrepair.to. Thank you for listening, and we'll be back from the break soon. The Credit Pros on Real Estate Radio New Jersey is hosted by local credit and finance experts Damon DiCrescenzo and attorney Jason Kaplan. The purpose of the show is to help consumers understand what's really going on with their credit. They're teaching you the why and the how-to, so you'll always be one step ahead of everyone else. If you are having problems qualifying for a purchase or you're tired of high interest rates because of bad credit, Jason Kaplan can help. Call Jason directly at 973-771-5118. That's 
973-771-5118. Take advantage of speaking with Jason anytime you're having a credit problem. Having someone who can answer all of your questions that truly cares about you and your family's best interest is priceless. Call Jason Kaplan and the Credit Pros today and you'll be glad you did. 973-771-5118. That's 973-771-5118 